Why is this boy's mum crying? And why will you suffer this exact same fate now unless you do something? This is Mike Mozart of Jeepers Media on YouTube, and this is my second video about SOPA and Protect IP, or PIPA. The two laws that they're trying to pass right now that are going to affect you not only in America, but in the UK, and this video goes out to all my fans in the UK, because the United States government is extraditing one of your college students named Richard O'Dwyer. That's right, because he actually had a website that linked to copyright infringing material. I'm not kidding, he just linked to copyright infringing material. He didn't host any on his website. If you've ever used torrents in the UK and you've shared files online, you can kiss your mom goodbye because the United States government's got a nice cold jail cell waiting for you. That's right, because they're gonna extradite you, fly you to the United States, and they're gonna imprison you for years. They're gonna start doing this to hundreds, thousands of people in the UK. We got prisons we're building here to hold you all. Do you know the United States imprisons a greater proportion of its population than any other country on earth? Do you know that the, the country that imprisons the next greatest proportion is Russia? You know how tough Russia is. We actually imprison 20% more of our population than Russia. We are number one in the world at imprisoning our population. And we want to start imprisoning the UK population. We got to grow those numbers. Look how our numbers have grown in the last few years. Why would our numbers jump so exponentially? Why would our numbers jump so? Does that look like we're becoming a police state? And billionaire Alki David has offered to pay the legal expenses of Richard O'Dwyer once he lands in the United States for the best legal representation money can buy. Mike, in the case of Richard, I will support all legal costs that will uh, bring his case to the forefront to highlight the hypocrisy of big media companies such as CBS who have almost single-handedly created the phenomena of copyright infringement through illegal file sharing. Illegal file sharing is abhorrent. It, it is not acceptable to steal copyrighted material. In the case of Richard, I don't know whether he's guilty or not. The, but the fact that he's being brought to America on extradition for copyright infringement supported by large media companies who are almost solely responsible for the creation of this phenomena of copyright infringement through illegal file sharing is disgusting. It is hypocritical and unacceptable. I support Richard in his fight against the big media hypocrisy. Thanks. We're going to make certain that his expenses are paid for the finest legal representation the United States can offer on principle. And what is that principle? This case is going to bring out the fact that the copyright infringement online was caused by the Senate division of CBS. It was caused by NBC. It was caused by ABC distributing the software through ESPN and Go.com. And it was caused only by the big media companies themselves. All right, that's the only place you could get that software. Why did they all distribute that software? Why were they virtually the exclusive distributors of that software? And why did they promote it for copyright infringement? Okay, CBS television fostered it, encouraged it, and distributed all that file sharing software through a site they own called CNET. CNET has an office in the UK. That's right, one of the largest overseas offices is in the UK. Well, they committed a lot of online piracy. Take a look at these examples here. What? CNET and CBS substantially promoted Pirate Bay? And look at this. Last.fm, a UK company owned by CBS Television in the United States. Why did they make a deal with Pirate Bay to distribute their widgets? CBS was very enthusiastic with their deal about Pirate Bay. And CBS made this deal with Pirate Bay immediately after purchasing Last.fm. Immediately. They didn't even wait. Pirate Bay isn't even legal in the United States, and they threw their full support behind it. This is one of the widgets. Are they endorsing Pirate Bay? And oddly enough, CNET division of CBS actually considered Last.fm to be spyware. Were they using these widgets to actually spy on Pirate Bay to take them down? It seems possible, since it was widely reported about that time period, that CBS was turning over user data to the RIAA from Last.fm. Or maybe it was just because CBS was actually distributing and promoting one of their new shows called Pirate Master in 2008. This is reported by Torrent Freak, and they actually had links right to Torrents to download the show, and this is on CBS's own website. 
Of course, this is one of CNET CBS's proud offerings, the Pirate Bay Search Download. This allowed you to actually cruise all the popular sites without actually going there, so you could download tons of pirated media, illegally. They even say that in this download. Of course, it's downloaded right from CNET's own servers. Even though CNET was offering this in 2010, they've taken it down because we squealed. But look how it came up in Google searches. Why did it come up pirated books downloads if you search pirated books? Why did it come up pirated movies downloads if you search that? Their search engine optimization featured the words pirated and pirating. Of course, the CBS CNET staff couldn't write enough glowing articles and reviews about how much they loved Pirate Bay, how much terrific material was there, all for the taking. Notice the editor's four-star review and the coveted, we recommend this add-on to all users. Look at this, they, they had LimeWire. Of course, Sumner Redstone had every reason to distribute as much LimeWire as possible, seeing he was profiting from the distribution of LimeWire by selling Viacom's Comedy Central material through LimeWire. Kazaa? 326 million downloads. Morpheus? Over 125 million downloads with the help of all their co-branded partners, Microsoft, AOL Time Warner, BitTorrent? It goes on and on and on. Seen at CBS wanted you to download pirated media so badly, they offered downloads specifically to cover your digital tracks, reviewed by their editors, and distributed through all their co-branded partners. Look at the freaking date this was added to CBS Seen it. And ZapShares was perfect to use if you were using LimeWire to download Lady Gaga songs, like the editors showed you in this screen capture. And do you know who heads up that company? Sumner Redstone, one of America's richest men. And you know what you're going to do? If it's okay for the United States government to extradite that poor kid to the United States to stand trial here for something that wasn't illegal there, Sumner Redstone distributed file sharing software to your country. He distributed it with charts and graphs, including known copyrighted artists that are still on their site seen it to this day. And they distributed over 50 million downloads of LimeWire just since Sumner Redstone bought CNET. So what you're going to do is, you're going to demand that your government in the UK extradite Sumner Redstone to the UK to stand trial for copyright infringement. That's right. You are going to demand it. You are going to write every single person in the UK. Because why should an American multi-billionaire be above the law? Hey, they can extradite one of your mates, some chap from England, over to the United States to sit in a prison for five or ten years. Let's go after who really caused the copyright infringement. Let's go after the big media companies that actually distributed this software. I bet you didn't know who invested tens of millions of dollars in BitTorrent. Um, SL partners, Paul G. Allen, Bill Gates, Microsoft. How come they're not in prison? They should be. Why Subner Redstone's company, Viacom, in their sworn statement of undisputed facts from Viacom versus YouTube, stated as fact, notorious pirate sites like Napster, Kazaa, and BitTorrent. Hey, I thought it was a piracy site. How come in 2008, all of these big media companies in the United States had content distribution deals with BitTorrent? You had a sworn statement in court they were a piracy site, Sumner Redstone. Why is your Paramount Pictures and MTV Networks there? Why are you bringing people to court over downloading from BitTorrent when you used it yourself? While Sumner Redstone's Viacom was swearing in court that BitTorrent was a piracy site, their own CNET wrote this wonderful review of it. Pros. BitTorrent downloads can be delivered to you using any BitTorrent client app. Partial to you, Torrent? No problem. Now you can mix your legal and pirated downloads into one client. Of course, every entertainment company distributed that software. Yeah, BitTorrent actually tried to go legitimate for a while. This is an article from CNET UK. Legit BitTorrent faces uphill struggle. Of course it did. Does this signal the death knell of all that is illegal in the world of file sharing? Cena admitted that BitTorrent was all that was illegal in the world of file sharing. Is it for anyone's benefit for BitTorrent to go down the same route as Napster or Kazaa? Well, Cena's been distributing this software before this article for seven years. <clears throat> we think it's fairly obvious that most of BitTorrent's existing 135 million users will flee in droves. 
free and illegal is always better than paid. Of course, their paid downloads failed. Remember, you have to look at the dates on this software from CNET CBS. This is November 5th, 2010. Mega upload super search. So you don't even have to use a search board. It actually scans through mega uploads. CNET staff reviewed it and recommended it. Of course, CNET CBS loved rapid share. Look at this day added August 19th, 2008 when CBS owned it. The editors reviewed it and loved it. This particular little item lets you search rapid share with a special bot so you would never have to use an external site downloaded right from their own servers. The CNET division of CBS offered dozens and dozens of BitTorrent toolbars allowing you to search the different sites such as Pirate Bay, Torrent Spy, IsoHunt without leaving the comfort of your own desktop or having to look at their advertising. They actually let you search it without going there. Here's another one of those torrent searchers CBS Cena offered. Uh, the pictures showed all the results for Lost, the TV show. JP Torrent is the first multi-search torrent program. It lets you search over 100 torrent pages with one click. And feast your eyes on the picture the Cena editors provided for you so you can see how effective it is. They showed you a picture of the Lost TV show. They checked over 300 different torrents. These are the top 15. Mini Nova, Pirate Bay, ISO Hunt, Torrent Spy. I think you get the idea that the whole point of downloading these was to find copyrighted TV shows. Huh, CBS? Seen it? CBS offered over 100 different torrent search tools. This one is Torrent Episode Downloader from 2009. Search and download torrents of new TV shows and episodes from the internet. Again, there's well over a hundred different one of these anonymous torrent downloaders that CBS CNET offered. They were distributed co-branded through all of their partner sites. This, this material is egregious compared to what that TV Shack kid did. The only statement the president of CBS made in regards to all this material is that it's all perfectly legal. I guess it's legal if you're a multi-billion dollar media company and not a UK student. And the CBS editors' reviews frequently featured copyrighted media. We have over 5,000 screen captures like this. So BitTorrent is really funded mostly by big U.S. corporations. So it's the big U.S. corporations that caused the piracy, and now they're going to go after you and your mates forever. You demand Subna Redstone be brought to justice in the U.K. Here's some of the evidence. There's a lot more evidence on one candle in the dark .blogspot.com. They, they distributed the software itself with instructional charts and guidance. We were using copyright infringing materials to show you how easy it is to do, to encourage you to do it. And now they're going to arrest you for actually doing it. Isn't it great? That's the American way. And you're not going to sit by for that. Heck no. You know how easy it is to tell your legislators that you want Sumner Redstone brought to the UK? Extradite him. He needs to be extradited to the UK. He needs to pay for his crimes. Since he bought out CNET, they distributed over 50 million downloads of LimeWire. They distributed BitTorrent. They distributed Kazaa, even after federal judges in the USA shut it down. They want to keep file sharing going so they can write these laws, so they can control the world and control you in the UK. You think they're getting off scot-free? Hell no. You extradite Sumner Redstone to your country and you try him for copyright infringement. And there's people that are going to say, hey, this kid Richard O'Dwyer from the UK made like thousands of quid from this little deal he had. Thousands of dollars. But you know what? Sumner Redstone and CBS and CNET made hundreds of millions of dollars. Hundreds of millions. How come they're not being extradited to the UK? They need to be. But the UK has one decision they need to make it right now. Are they representing their own people? Or are they representing the big corporations of America? If they're representing the corporations of America, fine. You've lost. But you know what? If they have any integrity at all, they will extradite Sumner Redstone and make him stand trial and put him in prison for years. Don't let some billionaire go free for all this egregious copyright infringement when your mate from college is going to spend five to ten years in prison in America for something that isn't even illegal in the UK. That's just sick. I mean really sick. And you share this video with every single friend you have. You send it on Twitter, you put it on Facebook, you download this, you re-upload this video all over the internet. You make, make certain the world sees this video.